Hey, how you doing? Justin here, and today we're going to talk all about capos, or capos. The pronunciation changes depending on what part of the world you live in. I tend to call them a capo. I know Americans call them capos. doesn't really make any difference. It's the same thing. And perhaps you've heard people talk about them. So commonly they look like this, and they just literally clamp onto the guitar neck, pressing down all of the strings, and it lets you use the same chord grips that you might have learned in open position further up the neck and they sound higher. Okay, so if I play like a regular E chord here at the open position, if I put my capo on at the fifth fret and play the same chord, sounds quite a bit higher. Now let me just talk about the different types of capo first of all, just very quickly. Uh, this first capo that I'm showing you here is called a Kaiser, it's a brand of capo. Uh, it doesn't really matter to be honest, this is a brand that I've used for a long time, uh, probably 20 years or more. This capo might even be that old. Uh, they do last a real long time. You can get a replacement rubber if the rubber wears out. Not that that's happened on any of mine. And they seem to press a really good amount. You've got to be careful with capos. If they press too hard on the strings, they can make all the strings go out of tune a bit. So you're one that's just got a nice amount of pressure. And I found these capos to be particularly good ones for that. Uh, you know, they're, they're pretty easy to get on and off. They've got these big kind of handles where you can push it you know to open and close the actual capo so actually putting it on it's pretty simple you just push the handles together and pop it down let it go and you're on there nice big handle makes it easy to move now that's a pretty common type of capo I really like it like that dig the brand lately I've changed to using this type of capo it's made by a company called G7 and I really like the fact that it's small it doesn't have the big handles the big handles might seem kind of useful for putting on, on and off initially but Really, you just put it on and squeeze it, and you're done. That's that's it. So uh, to release it, there's a little button at the top that you squeeze that, and then you take it off. So it's a very, very nice design. A lot smaller, so it's a lot less going to get in the way there. If you just look at the, if I put the Kaiser next to it, you can see this was a lot bulkier. There's a lot more kind of real estate, air real estate taken up there. So I, yeah, I'd probably recommend if you, they're perhaps a touch more expensive, but these are going to last you a really long time. As long as you don't lose it, you'll probably find that the capo lasts you for a good 20, 30 years or something. So, uh, you know, you don't have to scrimp on your first capo, I don't think. It's a good idea to get a good one. So I just want to talk about the placement of the capo now a little bit, because that's pretty important. When you put the capo on, you need to put it just before a fret. So if I want it the fifth fret, there's the fifth fret here. You want to put it like just behind the metal, not on top of the metal, but just behind it. You should get it nice and clear. If you put it too far back, you get this sort of thing going on. So you see it's, it's clamped and that's, even if I press really hard, it's still not there. You have to move it a bit further up. Okay, so it's kind of working halfway, but you'll generally get it a lot better. Just like the thing that I talked about with finger placement, how important it is to get your finger just before the fret. The same rule applies to the capo. So you want to get the just behind the fret there is the correct placement of the capo. And that makes a pretty big difference. So now let's talk about why you might want to use a capo. So the first reason is that you can play songs that you wouldn't normally be able to play by using a capo and simple chords. A really good example for this is Walk of Life by Dire Straits. Now, the actual chords in the song, it's using E, A, and B. Now, I'm playing them all as bar chords. You know already E, A, but you probably don't know B, so it's pretty much only available as a bar chord, which is a more advanced type of chord. Now, if we use a capo, we can play the same chord sounds, but using simpler chord shapes. So if I put here my capo at the seventh fret, I can play an A chord, sounds like an E chord. So if I play that and then an E chord, it's exactly the same. So the beginning of that song, E chord, ba -da 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 -da, A chord, da -da B chord, da -da 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 -da, A to the B, da -da 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 -da. you're like, oh, I'd love to play that song, but I can't play a B chord. By putting the capo on at the seventh fret, we can now go A chord, da -da, ba -da 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 -da, D chord, and the D chord now sounds like an A. E chord sounds like a B. And you'd now be able to play along with the original recording of the song using just your A, D, and E chords. 
So being able to use a capo to use simple chords to play more difficult songs makes it a really great thing for beginners to be able to do, particularly if you want to play along with original recordings, which is a great thing to do. If you're using my app, where the, the, the guitar Ryoki kind of play along stuff, we've changed the keys of the songs so that you can play them with the open chords without having to use a capo. But you can, there's a capo option in the app as well. And the reason for that is the next point of discussion, which is to change the key of a song so it might suit your voice. So let's say that you've got a song here, I'm just gonna make one up now, so you've got an E chord that goes la 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 and you're like, oh I can't hit that low note. So you might try putting the capo on, still play the same chord. La 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 I still can't quite get it, it's still too low. Let's try it up here at the fifth fret. La 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 now I've got it. And it's I found it works for my voice. Now this is particularly useful if you're a guy singer singing a song that was originally sung by a girl or a girl singer who wants to sing a song originally sung by a guy. Generally speaking, it's around the fourth to seventh fret for a girl going to a guy, and perhaps a little higher than that between fifth and ninth fret, sixth. I mean, it, it really depends on your voice and the range of your voice, but just as a very, very rough girl guide, if you're a girl singer trying to play a song that was originally sung by a guy, you want to put the, the, the capo up like four, roughly four frets-ish, four or five frets. As a starting point, but again, it, I mean, I, I kind of feel like I'm going into dangerous ground by giving you specific frets, but that's a, a, not a bad kind of starting point anyway. Now, one of the things that you'll probably find that it does end up being a bit trial and error. So you just want to play the song, you learn the song in open position, get used to the chords. When you go to sing it, you go, oh, this isn't really working for me. Let's see if I can find a better place for it. And then you might just put the capo somewhere at the third fret. And, and play the song again and try and sing it and go, well, no, it still feels a bit higher, a bit low, and then you try moving it somewhere else. You know, as you progress more and you get a bit more comfortable with the idea of capos and singing, so singing might be a whole new thing as well, but the more experience you get with all of that sort of stuff, you'll know roughly where the range is, the kind of keys that suit your voice well. The capo for a beginner is a really, really great tool, particularly for playing along with original recordings. And if you sing, being able to change the key of songs to fit your own voice. Both those reasons are fantastic uh, excuses to buy a capo. So you might see around on internet guitar forums people saying that capos are only for beginners, and that's just not true. People saying that don't really understand how to use a capo. Sure, you can, a beginner can use it as a tool to play a song that's got harder chords in it they can't play, right? That's a great tool. That's a handy, useful, wonderful thing about capos. The idea of changing the key of the song isn't just for beginners. Even the best musicians and the biggest named singer-songwriters, I don't know, Neil Young, uses a capo all the time. You know, he's a fantastic guitar player. He doesn't have to use a capo to get away with playing a song. I mean, he's writing the, his own songs. He can do them how he likes. He uses a capo to make the chords that he feels comfortable playing suit his voice. And that's a really, really great little thing. There's even more advanced ideas that you can get into with capos as well and funny tunings. And definitely don't feel like it's only a beginner thing is what I'm trying to get to here. They're a fantastic tool. If you get into it, you'll use it for your whole guitar playing life.